-hmm. And um, essentially, he was what I would refer to as a man who stared at goats, um, which is a film that's it's an optimistic, you know, portrayal of the shamanism and um, training and acid that was administered to the soldiers in Vietnam. And um, my dad was also heavily exposed to just so many things that are prevalent to um, mind control and basically uh, just, you know, psychic soldiers, that, that kind of thing um, that he, he was not in his right mind when he had me. Right. <laughs> um, and well, I mean, like, I don't want to say that outright, but he was a very heavily practicing occultist as well as my mother. And um, my mother comes from a very old family um, that I, I feel like people wouldn't recognize them, but people in their people in my family's own circle recognize them. So um, they're well known for publishing and editing and that kind of thing. Um, and my mom was a, she worked in publishing and she was a theosophist. So my father was essentially a Rosicrucian man who stared at goats, um, Vietnam vet. And my mom was a theosophical editor publisher. Can you explain and, what those two different, um, things are, the Rosicrucianist and the theosophist? Oh, yeah. Okay. They're very, they're very similar. It's just like two different brands. It would be like, um, the Rosicrucianism would be like a very clean, clean cut man's barbershop version of esotericism, um, of like, of the mysticism of like, uh, Kabbalah and, um, Hinduism and like, you know, the chakras, et cetera. Okay. Like, um, but the Rosicrucian concept is going to come off as more Christian because it's going, it's going to be filtered through, um, someone named Jakob Boehm who taught the Christian version of theosophy. But we all know that that's not a thing. There's no such thing as a Christian version of theosophy. So um, it's just occultism. It's just mysticism. I only ask you to explain these things, too, because, like, you are so articulate with a lot of these terms um, and this side of the world that I'm not super familiar with. And I'm sure, like, many of the listeners don't know exactly what these things okay. are either. So I appreciate you breaking it down for us, going back yeah, to, no problem. to that, that milk that we were talking about. <laughs> oh, true word. Oh, OK. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So yeah, essentially, my parents practiced mysticism of the East that gets that's been filtered through all different kinds of um, elitist authors and leaders and uh, influencers throughout time. So your family, your mom and dad, would they read the Kabbalah? Like this was like practiced in the home, or what was that childhood sort of like growing up? W under that belief system it, uh part of kabbalah and masonry involves um mercy and severity um so you go through polar extremes repeatedly and it encourages the split mind that um i was intentionally given uh through ritual abuse at a, as a young child but then you're put through even more um and uh, basically, the practice of Kabbalah in my home involved, um, in a lot of people's homes, it just will seem like, ooh, I'm a naturopath, I'm a mystic, I'm, you know, that kind of thing. It won't seem as harsh. Okay. But the deep, deep roots of Kabbalah, truly, if you really spend time in Kabbalah, um, the practice of it leads to hedonism or it also or it leads to it leads to so ugh, every facet of idol worship you could practice because it encourages self-ascension it encourages uh basically your works would get would get you to heaven in the kabbalah that's and the same thing is suggested in gnosticism um mm -hmm. is that you can ascend to godhood 
or, you know, ascended master or the, the next dimension, um, your crystal body, uh, if you dot, 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 if you yeah. do this task, if you perform this sacred task, this, if you, you know, that kind of thing, that whole concept is so deeply Luciferian that it really does take having the scales come off your eyes and standing back and looking at it and you can see it for what it is. So what, what, what I went through on a daily basis, a regular day for me looked like being taught, um, that being taught Kabbalah, being taught, uh, the new age, the concepts of the new age mm -hmm. that, um, reality was malleable that I, I was, I could control things. I was being, I was also being taught to manipulate. I was essentially an, an emissary for Satan, so to speak. Um, because I was, I was like a little, Kabbalah involves like ranking and ascension and like the, you know, Jacob's ladder. Like you have to, you have to put in all this human yeah. effort. Um, right, right. And it's interesting having like talked to, I have an ex-Mormon that was on the show and she kind of explained the process of Mormonism being similar to that. Like it really is. Yeah. There, there being different levels, you know, this work-based salvation. I know certain Jews that believe in this, um, that everybody goes to heaven, but there's different levels of heaven that you can get to based on your works and you can get closer to God head essentially. And it's the same thing in Hinduism, you yeah. know, this is a pattern you're picking up on exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, so in my house, like something that's really uh, like a facet of my house that I went through is that uh, there's this book by Chuck Palahniuk and Chuck Palahniuk is a Luciferian. He is the man who wrote fight club. Um, I'm very familiar with all of his work. It was encouraged and given to me in all of my programming by my handlers, etc. But nonetheless, there's a book called Damned. And it's about a little girl being raised by parents very similar to mine, except um, her parents seem slightly more loving. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes to hell. And she ends up praying to Satan and all this stuff. And it's and she wears sensible shoes and she's got a vocabulary beyond her years. And she interacts with all these demons and she has these quippy conversations with demons. And she meets essentially like, you know, Chuck Palahniuk's version of the Breakfast Club. And um, it's it's all chaotic. And the whole reason that she is the way she is, is she's forced to grow up too early. Like, you know, like you shared with me that you were forced to grow up too early. That's that is a facet of monarch programming mm. is the stealing of the childhood mm. because that is so essential. I, like I was telling my husband, like every single day of a child's life, you know, because I've nannied so much, like every single day, that's their life. Like to you, it's just a Tuesday. Like, yes, it's our life, but to, to us, it's just a Tuesday, you know, like life is a lot more monotonous, but no, like for them, those whole core memory things, that's a, that's a real thing. That's yeah. a real thing. So everything you pour into your child will spill out later on. Wow. And, um, and you know, that's, that really happened to me in, and you can see it in other children. Like when we get exposed to things too early, when we're forced to grow up, um, I've seen like an account on TikTok where this, this, this lady, this girl that I pray for all the time, like this woman, I should say, she dresses up as like a very, very little girl. And, um, you know, and says it's how she copes. And she's like, this is, I'm traumatized. So that's why I do this. And um, so like, even further, like, uh, you know, elder Christian women who hear this, like, um, take, take pride in growing up, like growing up is worth it. Growing up in Christ is, is the goal. It is worth it. It's not, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Like, Aging, aging up and growing into an older woman as a Christian is a blessing because you truly become a fountain for others in a way that you wouldn't ever have expected. Yeah. So, so then, yeah. your childhood was like, okay, so you had to grow up really, chaotic. you were taught, yeah. Yeah, taught these like, you know, chaotic teachings, but was there any kind of like abuse or it was mostly yeah. like spiritual or? Okay. 
we will I'll I'll tell you it it was my mom had something called dissociative identity disorder and it was caused by um her monarch programming because she too was trafficked in New York and um her forgive me if I like stumble a little bit I don't actually discuss this but I know I'm supposed to um basically her dad uh put her through what I went through and um because of my mom's DID uh she what happened to her happened to me monsters become monsters that's that's what this is that's what monarch programming is about that's why if you take in Cardi B you are going to be like Cardi B and you're going to possibly in and like I don't know if any or like if you take in all these people you're going to be like them and they do give their their spiritual energy to Satan. So what yeah. was done to me um was I was put through a lot of a lot of like actual regimented abuse the same way my mom was, which means I was like locked in a box for certain amounts of times, you know, uh denied food, denied light, um denied the ability to move uh did not um i was sexually abused a lot and an extremely important core of that like my mom used to make the joke that she's a she was a closet disney fan a closet disney fan disney is inherently a pedophilic material like anything that comes out of disney is going to be stained with um Mm -hmm. programming and they actually joked about it once in a Adams family movie where they like locked up the kids and made them just watch Disney movies. And, um, I definitely I'll, see that. Yeah. And also if you're, if your mom ever jokes about selling you on the black market, like, and like, it's like the nineties and like, it's not really a thing to joke about it yet. Like, but it's, it's a joke to her and it's a joke to her friends, <laughs> her rich hippie friends. She's not joking. You're mm-hmm. probably just associated and don't really get what your mom's talking about. Like, essentially, that's what happened. I was the scariest part of monarch programming is on the outside. The adults can make it look so um, perfect and acceptable and neat. And they all smile at each other and they smile at you while they do these horrific things. Mm-hmm. And um, that's why Luciferianism is so scary is because it can appear so beautiful but um like it's literally like that movie get out it's like on the inside you're suffering you're yeah. suffering you're screaming and um you don't, sometimes you don't even know why so just like as a child uh and the, the thing is I got DID as a child from what happened to me so I basically went through my life with DID until Jesus was like no wow. <laughs> you like you are integrated now like you don't have to be split 